Okay, in this video we're going to look at this general result involving power series solutions of differential equations at ordinary points. And it uh, discusses the recursion that the coefficients of the power series must satisfy. So let's read it off. So the coefficients a n of any solution, so we have y um, equals the sum of a n x minus x zero to the n, so that's a power series based at x naught, of this differential equation. So notice we have one plus alpha x minus x naught squared y double prime plus beta x minus x naught y prime plus gamma y equals zero. And notice that x naught will be an ordinary point because if we plug x naught in here, we do not get zero, we get one. And so these coefficients satisfy the following recursion. So a n plus two is minus p of n over n plus one times n plus two a sub n, where p of n is the following polynomial. So it's alpha times n times n minus one plus beta times n plus gamma where alpha, beta, and gamma were given as part of the structure of the differential equation. Okay, good. So this will be really helpful if we ever see a differential equation of this form, which these are actually pretty common. So uh, let's look at the proof of this. So the proof will look like uh, the same strategy as finding a series solution for such a differential equation, um, <clears throat> except it's just a bit more general with all the alphas, betas, and x naughts in there. Um, so what we want to do is set y equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x minus x naught to the n. And so that tells us that y prime equals the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n times a sub n, x minus x naught to the n minus 1. Good. And then likewise, we have y double prime equals the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times uh, a sub n, and then we have x minus x naught to the n minus 2. So I ran out of room there, but I have x minus x naught to the n minus 2. Great. So now what we'll do from here is plug these series into the dis this differential equation and show that these uh, coefficients have to be satisfied by this recursion. So we'll have 1 plus um, alpha x minus x naught squared, so that's going to be multiplying into y double prime, so we have the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1, a sub n, x minus x naught to the n minus 2. Good, so we have that, and then next we have that is added to, let's see, beta times x minus x naught, and then the series for y prime, so that's going to be the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n a sub n x minus x naught to the n minus 1. Good. And then finally we have gamma times y. So we'll have, this is plus gamma times y, which is the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a n x minus x naught to the n. And we know all of this is supposed to be equal to 0 because this series is meant to be a solution to our differential equation. Okay, so at this point, we want to start manipulating the series so they look similar in a way that we can combine them together. So what we'll first do is take these two terms and distribute them onto this series. We'll take this term, distribute it in, and we'll take this gamma and distribute it in and see what we get. So let's see, this first term will give us the following. So we'll have the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times a n times x minus x naught to the n minus 2. Great, so that's what we get for multiplying this 1 through. So now let's see what we get for multiplying this alpha through. So we're going to get the sum um, of alpha times n times n minus 1 times a sub n times x minus x naught 
to the n. So let's see what we did there. Notice the x minus x naught squared multiplied to the x minus x naught to the n minus two and gives us x minus x naught to the n. And now instead of starting at n equals two, I'm gonna use the fact that the first two terms of this will be zero to start at n equals zero so that we can combine it with the next few terms. Okay, great. So now uh, from here things are shaping up because notice we have alpha n times n minus one and notice that looks to be part of this polynomial. Okay, great. So now we'll do this next term. So this will be plus the sum n equals zero to infinity where I'm doing the same trick here as I did with the second derivative. And now I have beta times n a sub n x minus x naught to the n. Okay, fantastic. And now the next thing we have is uh, plus um, the sum n equals zero to infinity of gamma a sub n x minus x naught to the n. So no like um, changing of indices or anything needs to happen with that. So we have the following. Now notice that these three yellow underlying terms are like terms in the sense that the uh, powers of x minus x naught are the same. So we can combine those into the same sum pretty easily. And then this first one is the odd man out. So I'll, re I'll erase the board and then I'll combine those two yellow underlying terms, leave this one as is, then we'll re-index this and move towards the end of this proof. Okay, so picking up off uh, where we left off, notice that here I have combined all of those yellow underlying terms together. So the a sub n terms were the same in all of them, they were greatest common factor of everything. The x minus x naught to the n term was also a greatest common factor. So we get the following. And now notice, let's look at the statement of our theorem. Notice we have p of n equals alpha n, n minus one plus beta n plus gamma, and that is exactly this term right here. So that means we're on the right track. So now what we need to do is re-index this so the power of x minus x naught matches with the other yellow underlined one, and we can do that by doing the following. We'll replace n with n plus two. Okay, great. So that allows us to rewrite this as the following. So we have the sum n equals zero to infinity, and now we'll have n plus two times n plus one times a sub n plus two, and then we'll have x minus x naught to the n, and now this will be plus the sum n equals zero to infinity, and now I'll rewrite that as p of n. Now we have x minus x naught, sorry, we have a sub n, x minus x naught to the n, and all of this is equal to zero because our assumption is that it uh, satisfies the differential equation. So next, we can combine all of this together and we'll get the following. So this tells us that we have um, the sum n equals zero to infinity of n plus two, times n plus one times a n plus two um, plus p of n a sub n and all of that is being multiplied by x minus x naught to the n and we get zero. So now if we view the right hand side as a power series where all the terms are zero, then that tells us that every term in this power series on the left hand side must equal zero in order for us to have a solution. And notice if we solve all of this equals zero, we get exactly this recursion. So in other words, we get a sub n plus two equals um, negative p of n over n plus two times n plus one a of n, and that is true for all n bigger than or equal to zero. And that um, is the end of the proof.